Hello and welcome to the Final Shape developer gameplay preview. I decided to record this one and sort of, I guess, kind of comment on things as we go through. Historically, I'm not the best at this because I end up just watching in silence. But that's the beauty of a video. I can edit it afterwards. <laughs> it's almost half past five in the UK, which means that this stream should begin very soon. And I have no idea what to expect. I don't know what a developer gameplay preview is. Um, I, I would assume it shows different parts of environments in, in the final shape, and perhaps the new supers that are coming and some weapons. I doubt it's going to give away anything of the campaign, but I, I guess we will see if there's new crystal maps, maybe it'll show that. Yeah, I think they've been pretty tight-lipped about the final ship, so it'll be interesting to see what they actually tell us. I've got my cup of tea. I may have to leave at some stage, pause the stream and come back, but hey-ho. Here we go. Trailer. Is it? No, it's not. It's just sort of the string. Hey everyone. There we go. This is Luke, Luke Smith. Oh. I'm gonna tell you what's coming next to Destiny Two and beyond. After we face the witness. We'll see you soon. Mm. That makes sense. I, I don't really want them to tell us what's happening afterwards <laughs> until that happens. I'm very intrigued the as to whether has hmm, been an Traveler amazing project to work the Tar will be fixed The amount of creativity, today. the amount of design work, the amount of all these elements coming together. It's the guy who does the effect, isn't it? Like, are you guys, <laughs> the side you Ooh, what? Instantly red bar bottom left underneath the super. That's a bit strange. Is that a dev thing? Witness face? Subjugator. Okay, so mini rulk. This is in the tar area of whatever the traveler space is called. Also, funky knives. Moths? What are these things? Also, this is meant to be 1080p, but I think it's just because there's so much going on. It's been really compressed into live stream. What? Uh, the, the moth thing scream new race to me. New enemy race. One of the concept artists early on created this very evocative image of a guardian with light armor and dark armor. We're like, very we interesting. really need this in the final shape. This is the ultimate form of being a guardian to wield light and darkness at the same time. We build oh. a exactly to be that. Prismatic is the new subclass in the final shape where you can combine certain class abilities. We are getting a new sub types together. Getting light. What? No one's done that before. Like the witness is manipulating the energies like this, but the witness is not a master of light. What? So we are, I mean, it, so it's like a customizable subclass is what they're telling us. Underneath your super bar, there's a light meter and a dark meter. As you deal damage with either light damage or dark damage, that guy's got strand, solar, and arc. What? Once both sides are full, you get this new level of power that we're calling transcendence. I love transcendence because you do these cool motions. For warlocks, we have this cool like mystic pose. Hunters are gonna do this cool like. That's what that was. While you're transcendent, you get a new, unique grenade that combines both light and dark together. The hunters Whoa. get this fire and ice combo. Titans, Strand, and Arc. For the Warlock, Stasis, and Void together. So. You have a weapon damage bonus that stacks on top of other weapon damage bonuses. Your grenade and melee are both instantly refunded when you cast Transcendence. Nightfall. So you can loop them together, one after the other. I saw what looks like Europa there as well. That is so good. We're kind of thinking about Prismatic as this advanced subclass where you have where is that? more build crafting options. Is it the, uh, I don't know what that is. Combinations, it must be in the music station. More fragment slots to socket them than you normally get. That is a lot of combinations. 2,300. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just the art director. So it's a customizable it's subclass, prismatic. like where like you can you take bits and pieces from different subclasses. It seems. Do... It feels a little game breaking. I'm not gonna lie. It's well, signs of a little game breaking. Which makes sense, to be honest, because they had like 
We were under the impression we weren't getting a third subclass. Like, oh no, what have I done? I'm going to be here all night. And now we're getting a kind of third subclass. I do find this concept of Inside the Traveler really, really interesting because it's taking basically locations from every destination we've been at, it seems. It, it gives me the same sort of vibe as there is the Revelation zombies map in Black Ops 3, and it was a combination of all these different zombies maps. That's what this gives me the impression of. Oh, this seems a lot more creative. People will find a combination which is the best, and then people will start using only that. <laughs> How is that going to work with all these ignitions and like the keywords that they talk about? Because a, a lot of things with subclasses work together, so it sounds like you're sacrificing the ability to have all these things within the subclass play off each other in order to have basically quite funky things. This was the last thing I was expecting to see, I have to be honest, and they're opening with it. Like, this allows you to do stupid things like having grapple in every subclass, which is just a very basic thing. But you could have grapple with every subclass. You could have invis for hunters on every subclass. You could have the dodge to make you invisible with um, just everything. Like a grenade from like a stasis grenade, and, or you could have a grapple with it as well. It's just like, what? This is bizarre. Like, this is exactly what people have wanted for years to be able to combine different things. I, I feel like these are things that you hear about in the lore, but like Osiris has done this using different elements and stuff. Now it's a bit more extreme because it's back to back supers and stuff. But this is literally like you're able to chuck a void grenade, use your solar melee, and then use your strand as a super. Like, what? And then there's whatever that prism is. It what it's called? Prism? I don't know whatever that second bar is that's mad as well but that almost seems like the trade-off it seems like the trade-off for having all these different things work really well in in your like void subclass and solar subclass and stuff you're trading off the the keywords working really well and all that in order to have strong individual things which might work together in some way from different subclasses and then you get this like prism bar which gives you more power in the final shape we're going to be making these new exotic class items. Oh. These new exotic class items allow you to steal perks from other exotics and combine two perks together what? into one single exotic. What? The perks that come on them are actually random rolled. One thing that is going to be fun is to chase these perks and then find different combinations that work really well. What? Excuse me? So... They also look you can take so exotic perks from two different exotics and put them on your class item, is what you're telling me. It's random rule. What's going to be the point of using actual exotics? I'm assuming not all exotics are going to be poss like, possible to take the perk from. But is it not going to make basically every exotic, which is possible to be added to this class item, irrelevant? It's gonna just be fun to see what comes. Because it's random ruled. Fine, so you have wide, luck associated with it. But as soon as you get it, then it makes the exotic irrelevant. I mean, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's gonna be broken as anything. I've, like, it's gonna give to Lester a run for its money, I think, but how many times it's gonna break the game. Also, I'm seeing new enemies. What are these blade people? What were the flying mothball things? And we have subjugators? Like, look at that. What is that? It's like a gargoyle. And then you've got a subjugator. You've got whatever those blade hand things were. It seems like there's actually some sort of a new race here. Which aren't nightmares, but they're actually, they look terrifying. Yeah, what's this? Dread are this new witness faction. The Dread. They've kept a lot tight, like when close to their chest. What? These, you see, like a through line that we've been building through the years that connects it all together. Oh yeah, tormentors, subjugators, these Dread-looking things. You've seen a member of the Dread before. You might remember seeing the tormentor make a big appearance last year. Yeah. Well, that was just the first one. You have like this slate of new enemies with like the Tormentor and the Subjugators and the Weaver and the Attendant and the Grim and the Husk. What? 
So they've 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 kept an entire new enemy race. It's a profile we've never seen in Destiny. You close to their chest. Like they haven't mentioned it since reveal. They've kept this brand new subclass which seems like it's gonna break the entire game completely close to their chest. They've had all this bad news happen over the past six months. They've had the delay the final shape. And <laughs> now they tell us this. I'm thrilled. But I'm shocked it's Bungie. That's the husk. Alright. They hurt. They have two of these very sharp melee weapons, and they just come charging with those things and we'll just slice and dice. They look terrifying. They are really dangerous, especially in groups. If you manage to kill the husk, you have to be careful. Because if you kill it the wrong way, what's inside of the husk? The geist is gonna pop out and it's oh. gonna seek you out. Same sort of idea as the moths from More Witch Queen. To admit. Now I'm like looking everywhere every time I go into a fight and I'm like, is there a husk somewhere? Is there a husk somewhere? Because I'm targeting that first. <laughs> it seems like these are going to be enemies which sort of support existing factions though. And the like these don't seem red bar enough to be... Have by the witness. Like, oh, you can have a swarm. Show, like, the influence oh, there's a lot there. But you can have a swarm of like scions or legionaries or a swarm of vex goblins. Or acolytes, but I don't think you could have a swarm of husks or a swarm of these things. I feel like these are more like. Also, those are scions. The weaver does something we've never done before. It'll shoot out this complete. I mean, tormentors are copies of. Um, Nezarek via cloning technology that that Kalas had. It seems like the subjugators are copies of Rilk using the same technology, I assume. And I would say that each one of these enemies are probably the same idea. Because they just look like Scions. Obviously they work completely different, but it looks like they're based off Scions. It looks like... The Husk things might be scored related? I don't know. I'm astonished that this even exists. I never thought something like this would come to Destiny. I just thought it would be too far too game-breaking. Who is that? That looks like Dreamy City sort of stuff, and then it's just grass. That was a very interesting transition. Oh, cute. I'm blown away by that. I'm absolutely stunned that this exists pyramid vessel exotic ship wow into the light launch trailer oh okay didn't expect this as the final shape approaches and the forces of the witness are there pyramids around the place now lord shax has been authorized by the vanguard to place an arsenal of banned weapons from his personal <laughs> collection back into circulation it looks like there's pyramids everywhere now, which I love. Like Cosmodrome, I'm hoping they're over the Lost City. Yeah, I mean, I, the weapons are cool. I do like Blast Furnace. I also Pushing back only never had the recluse. The alternative is unthinkable. I can't wait I'm falling gu falling guillotine is one that I'm looking forward to. I don't know what these areas are. Like I've I haven't nice. seen what that is. Hollow foil. Oh, is that what the shader's called? Just whispers back. Zero arc comes back at some stage. A craftable whisper is gonna be crazy. I grip perfected as well, which is a weapon I will actually use. So if the enemies of humanity want war, let's give them war. I'm interested as to what the story is going to be, because there's got to be some sort of story in this. 
Like, I get, like, the, the forces of the witness have advanced, but as far as I know, the witness is not able to actually tell us anything. Also, like, it isn't able to communicate outside of the Traveller. Also, is the tar fixed? Getting creative. I love to see it. I mean, yeah, Black Shader. Oh, was that? Okay, well, very interesting. Um... <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah. So let me let me think. So we've got a new subclass, which isn't really a new subclass. It's a customization option. So it lets you it lets you create your own subclass using things from existing subclasses. So it seems that you can select your super, you can you can select your grenade, your melee, your class ability. It looks well, I mean not that not a class ability actually changes depending on what class it is, but it probably changes depend like because warlocks depend if it's a void dodge or if it's a or like a, a void rift for your void soul or whatever it is. Um But it looks like you can pick bits and pieces from different classes, probably use different fragments from different classes and that sort of thing, I think is what they said, and different aspects. So you can basically create your own subclass. And then the trade-off, the way I look at it is each subclass does have keywords and stuff. So there's like the suppression and the, you know, the, the, volat the volatile and all that for like void. Um, so the trade-off for not having a bunch of things which work well together in, that, in, in, a, in one subclass seems to be that you've got this prism thing. And also the fact that you can combine broken things from different subclasses, because, you know, having one powerful thing in a subclass and then making some things not so powerful but you need them is balancing. Um, but it looks like the trade-off for having none of these keywords working quite as well as they should is having the ability to just plonk together really powerful things, but also the fact that then there's the prism thing, which then makes them even more powerful. So... It'll be interesting. I think there still will be need to have a certain subclass because of the whole keyword business. Then there's also the new enemy type, which is bizarre, the Dread, which I think is actually a good name because Nightmares is already taken and they look like things straight out of Nightmares, but calling them the Dread just sounds perfect. Um, comprising of Tormentors, which we already have, um, the Subjugators, and then these like husks and and stuff. I think, like, I'm still going with my theory that these are basically clones that have been darknessified because the, the subjugators are clearly rilks, like mini rilks. The tormentors are clearly small nazareks. Um, the uh, sniper like the sniper units for the dread seem to be scions. They look very scion-like. Um, even like the head's very scion-shaped. So something, I don't know what the husks are. I would say Scorn, because Scorn are a bit melee focused and, and like the run, like, you know, the, the, the sort of standard Scorn units. I could see them being like, you know, it could be the, the two, like the Scorn guy that is the two fire sticks that goes melee and yeah, I could see it being like a darkness version, like a darknessified version of that guy. I could see that. Uh, I don't know what the gargoyle flying bat looking things could even be. Uh, I've, I don't know of anything that flies from like the hive or the scorn or anything, but that could be brand new, I guess. It could also be an enemy race, which I guess we haven't seen. Um, but I think it would make sense if these are basically copies, because tormentors seem like the first thing of their kind, and the lore for that was that it was it was using Callus's cloning technology to clone Nezarak, basically. So it looks like that's made its way over to Rilk and now a few other classes, a few other races, so that's very interesting. The class, the exotic class items allowing you can, to combine different perks from different exotics sounds like it's going to be completely broken. Um, it, it, it seems like it's going to make every exotic that's possible to have uh, like in that redundant because there's not going to be a need unless they're slightly less powerful versions. It doesn't seem like they'll be, like, if I get an Orpheus Riggs aspect for it, like an, and, and like a Stompy's aspect for it, I'm never going to take the class item off because, you know, if I'm using Void, which would benefit from Orpheus Riggs, but it gives me the ability of Stompy's and Orpheus Riggs, what would make sense is if not all exotics are possible to have, I would say that's probably how it's going to go. Also, 
Uh, it is random. So it could take you months and months and months to get the role that you actually want. So that's probably how they're justifying it. But if you do get the role you want, then it makes the other exotics irrelevant. But they need the exotics because it, it's a way that you can be guaranteed to get it, I guess. But it's very interesting. I doubt you'll be able to like shape the thing or anything like that. So it sounds, sounds very interesting. But wow, uh, I didn't expect all that. As for today with the, the whole into the light thing. I want to see pyramids in every location. That makes sense, I guess. Um, it's Jimming City, but it doesn't really make sense. I want to see uh, the tar rebuilt, because in the promo image, it's completely fine. I want to see the tar completely fine. <laughs> I know the new social space isn't the tar area. It's some back, like, it's storage room area, but in that promo image, the tar was fixed. Not that that means anything. They've been using the fixed tar picture for like the versions of Destiny for years now, because um, it's just the iconic thing of this is Destiny, even though it's been broke for basically seven years. But whatever. Um, anyway, that that's it. I'm gonna have to trim this down. But that was actually really interesting. I didn't expect it to be anywhere near that good, and they've kept so much close to their chest, despite them going through potentially studio ruining events, which I'm shocked about. Because if they had revealed this months ago, I think it really would have restored faith in Bungie from the community. But at the same time. It's good they're doing it now. I'm very, very happy. Um, I think this is a good time, really, because there's like three months until the final shape comes out. Two months. Wow, we are actually quite close to it. Anyway, yeah, that's that's interesting. So uh, leave your comments below on whatever you are looking forward to and your ideas. I may have missed things. I'm sure I did. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I'm really shocked by what they showed off. and. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll see you in, in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>